think it's time we have a little conversation about how to do libraries in C++. Now, it's uh, the thing about libraries, C++, and, and just about any other language, eventually someone comes along and makes a package manager for them. But there is no standard, and that's where the problem comes in. There are so many different ways to do C++ libraries, and it's, you know, like for for JavaScript, there's Node, for whatever, there's whatever, like every language, there's something. Uh, Python has pip. Uh, I'm trying to think of other one. OCaml has some something too. Uh, every language I've ever checked out and then got into a little bit always has something. C++ libraries. When I search for this, I just get a bunch of C++ libraries that are used commonly, like Boost, Poco, which is uh, software uh, network stuff, ASIO, Ligand. Some of these I haven't used. Some of these I have. Um, but how do you include them? That that's where uh, sometimes people will get stuck. And there's a couple different ways. You can do it statically, you can do it dynamically, or you can do some header only build where it builds in with the objects of your project. That's the basic ways. And uh, to briefly explain the difference between static and dynamic libraries, uh, I spelled that wrong, but whatever, it'll correct. There we go. So static libraries are copied per project basically. When you include a static library, you get a copy of the library with whatever you're building. When you do a dynamic library, the library is already built and you just uh, use whatever the functions out of it and it's not built with your project. So if you have multiple projects and you don't want to copy the library a bunch of times, you use dynamic. If you want it to be fully included on its own with your project, you use static. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, but that's the gist of it. Dynamic will make you end up with smaller uh, object files typically, but then you have to include the DLL or whoever tries to run your project. It's also a runtime. The dynamic is a runtime check. So when someone goes to run your program, they'll throw that DLL error if it doesn't find it. You've probably seen that before pop up. But a static library will never do that. It's already built in, but the object file is larger. So I guess the header only is sort of like static, but it's not actually, but it basically is built in with your objects just the same. So it's not being reused from a single dynamic library. There's Conan, Conan IO, which is a open source package manager that you can generally use for everything. I tried to get started with this. I spent about an hour with Conan and uh, I kind of got it going. It actually has you do everything through Python, which is uh, kind of cool, I guess. But it was a it was a little more for how when you read the answer introduction, it makes it sound like it's super simple. And I can see that it kind of is, but you've got to understand a lot of things before it gets simple. And I was starting to kind of get to the point where it was starting to get simplified for me. But overall, I'm not the biggest fan in the world yet. I'm still going to play around with Conan. Maybe I'll do a video later about Conan IO. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Um, but the other one is VC Package Manager. And as you can see, someone had, as I was typing that in, VC Package Manager versus Conan is a pretty popular thing. So maybe we could talk a little bit about that. But if you're using Microsoft stuff, VC Package Manager can do the same thing. You can go grab libraries that you need. So this is really, you know, it's something you need to know as a developer, no matter what you're making, because you're going to need network libraries. You're going to need windowing libraries. You're going to need um, graphics libraries and things like that. So anything you might need, you can get through these, or you can not use these at all and do it your own way. So that way you don't need to include a package manager and worry about it. You can just do it your own way. And actually that's, that's what I've come to. I've used VC package manager a little bit. It's actually pretty nice. But I just don't like having additional dependencies, basically, because uh, now if you want to work on the project, you've also got to mess with the package manager. And uh, that can be avoided, and you can just use git. Now, 
How you want to include your static and dynamic libraries is ultimately up to you and there is no proper standard. You go to 20 different places, you're not going to get 20 different answers. You'll probably get like five different answers of people doing it different ways. And I want to talk a little bit about kind of my favorite kind of my, I sound like the Sherno. I keep saying kind of. Um, I want to talk about the way I've recently been doing libraries. And this is a Windows thing. If I were, I guess if I were on Linux, I would probably do it about the same. It would work about, it could work about the same, except you just have to make a CMake file or a uh, make file for it. Let me launch Visual Studio here. And I want to talk a little bit about how I like to do libraries. I'm just going to do a brand new project that is empty. Well, empty, yeah. I'll do an empty project, just an empty project here. So it's just a new project and I don't know, I'll just call it including libraries. That'll do. So you can see, there we go. Oh, okay, the new version. I think I'm actually gonna ignore that for now since I'm doing a video. I'm just gonna set this up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna click on the project. I'm gonna click this show all files. Show it shows me an actual structure of what's going on. And of course there's nothing because I chose empty projects. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this project and go to add new item. We're gonna do a CPP file. So it's gonna be an object file, something to build. And we're gonna make our main. So we're gonna call it main.cpp. And we'll just say int main and uh, return zero, of course, or if we're being proper, we'll say exit success, which is just zero. And to include that, I've got to include the C standard live. There it is. That's a that's some terrible formatting right there. All right. So here we go. We'll just make it a little more proper real quick. Okay, so there's our main. So if we build this, we build in any configuration. It'll run fine. It's not going to do anything except return a zero. And yeah, there it goes. Unable to start. Operator did not complete successfully because the file contains a virus or potentially unwanted software. This is a really weird error to get. I've never seen this error actually. Operation did not complete successfully because the file contains a virus or potentially unwanted software. WTF. There are so-called false positives that occur to false entries in the malware database. This is often a false positive. Wait, what the heck is this? I'm so confused. 86 debug. Yeah, it's the x86 debug that doesn't, that throws the error. That's really strange. We're going to ignore that. Okay, so now let's talk about including libraries. Let's say, let's pick a common library and just use it as a sample. And now I'm talking about open source libraries here. There's a lot of open source libraries that you can use. And if you want to only use open source, you don't need a package manager. You can just independently build them on your own. So let's say I want to, let's say I want to use GLFW3, which is a uh, OpenGL windowing system, OpenGL Vulkan context windowing system, which is pretty commonly used with C++ if you're doing graphics because it works on both Windows, Linux, and Mac, all three. Both, I said both because I was going to say Windows and Linux, but we'll throw Mac in there too. It's it's a survivor. So GLFW, how do you include it? You could do it through Conan, you can do it through VC Package Manager. VC Package Manager might actually be the easiest uh, just because we're already using Visual Studio. But what if you don't even want to mess with that? You just want to build the latest version of GLFW yourself and then use that library because it's open source. You should be able to do that, right? Well, you can. Let's go ahead and go to GLFW. You can see it down or download the latest version that they released, or you can see a clone. So we're going to actually click, well, let's go for, for example, let's click on the download first and see what it does. It actually downloads a zip of it. Okay. Whatever. That's fine. So you can use this file to do it. Um, I'm not going to do that right now though. I'm going to use, do a clone. That way I get the latest version with my project all the time. So we're going to hit this clone button and copy the link. Now you can clone with Visual Studio's Git. I don't have that set up right now. So I'm going to launch a program called Fork. Actually, forget Fork. 
Let's use git bash. Git bash is even cooler. Okay. Uh, I think my repos are actually on a different drive. So I'm just go I'm going to go to my E drive. I'm going to go to, well, let me see what I got here. I think I have in storage. Yeah. CD storage. This is where I keep my projects. So you basically, I'm just basically going to where I keep my projects. There's a bunch of stuff in storage. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to run repos. I'm pretty sure that's in here. No, it's under source. Jeez. I've got a lot of files on this, on this, uh, hard drive source repos. There we go. And then there we go. So I've got a bunch of other projects in here already. I have glue, but I don't have GLFW three. So let's go ahead and clone GLFW three. We'll just do a uh, git clone and I should have that link still copied. So I'm going to right click and do a paste. No, it's glue. I have glue copied now. Copy. So you basically just want this link. Of course you'll have to set up Git. I assume you already did that. And we're just going to clone it and we're going to clone it into the folder we're in right now and let it do its thing. So now we can change directory into that folder into GL. Well, let's just look at it. Yeah, there it is. GLW. And of course, if you go into GLW, you will see that it has all its files and a CMake uh, build stuff. So what we want to actually do next is just launch CMake. CMake GUI is what I'm using here on Windows. And we're just going to go ahead and build it. So we're going to go uh, same folder, except this time we're going to go to GLW. And then that's fine. That's where the source code is basically the root CMake file. And then we want to decide where to build the binaries. This is where you kind of got to make some choices about where you want to uh, be doing your includes and stuff. So I'm just actually going to do it on the root of this repo, which usually people make a build folder, but I have my reasons for doing it on the root uh, on this particular project. So we're going to source code and build in the same spot in this case. Like I said, usually people do a build folder here, but I'm just not doing that purposely because really it's because of the way G, uh, GLFW has its CMake files and it makes the include a little weird if you have the build folder to me anyway, but it, you could do it that way. It's fine. You'll just have to make some adjustments later. So there it goes. It's doing its thing. Didn't find oxygen. Um, didn't find some stuff, but it all configured and didn't have any errors. So we're going to open the project with Visual Studio because that's what we generated for. And now we want to build for the version of our other project. So we see here we've got debug 64. If we want to build that one, we'll just go to build, build solution. And it's going to build whatever the project it's on, which is an all build currently. So that's probably going to generate all the libraries actually. Look at this output. Yeah, it's still gone. 32 succeeded. So it built, no, it just built all the debug 64 stuff. So if we also, maybe we want release 64 as well. So we'll go ahead and build that one. We're only going to build the 64 bit ones, but as you can see here, you could also build the 32 bit ones. If you want to build your other project 32, your libraries do have to match debug release 32, 64. So I've built the debug and the release of 64. That's fine. I could also do min size release, but I'm just going to stick with the release. Okay. So we're actually done here. I'm just going to close out, uh, all of this now, close out all this, close this. And we've got built. We do an LS here. We'll see a bunch of new files. It's all the visual studio stuff. Um, and just once again, I'll say it's not normal to build everything into the same repo. Um, at least from a CMake standard, but I'm just doing it anyway, because it's going to make things easier. So now let's say we just want to, we just want to do some uh, GLFW windowing. Actually, you know, let's, let's look at the samples. Most code, open source code comes with some samples. So we're going to do a file open project or solution, and we're just going to open GLFW solution here open here we are 
So we'll see some tests, some examples. So let's just pick one of these examples and we'll throw it into our code because it's going to be essentially the same. I'm going to change this into all files so I can actually see their structure. I've got a lot of things going on here and they have these little minus signs on them, which means they're not included in the project. This is called boing. So, well, let's just go to this and let's just run it. Let's go to set a start a project, release 64, and we'll hit play. There we go. We got a little classic Amiga demo of a boing. Um, yeah, let's just do it. We'll just go to, let's go to this, open the files. Let's open our other project. What was it called? Just live, including lives. Yeah, there we go. We, haven't, we don't really have anything in this yet, but I just want to show you how to include GLW3. So they've got a lot of code here. This is kind of a lot to, to unpack and work with here. So let's see what they got going on. Got a lot of different, different stuff building here oh this is all the projects that's that's what's going on here this is like all those sample projects in the same folder so that's why it's so confusing but i think the only thing we really need is this main one here the boing and it should have a main so let's search for a main and see if they got a yeah they got it down here so there's the main so basically what they do is they declare a GLFW window. They try to initialize GLFW, make sure it doesn't fail. Then they create the window and then they set up some, some stuff and then they go through a main loop and, uh, and do some stuff. Okay. So if we want to, we'll just grab all this code here in the main and I'm just going to paste it into mine. And we see a bunch of red because we haven't included GLFW. Of course, the include is going to look like this. Uh, I think it's GLW. We don't even see it. It doesn't see it because we haven't included it. So now I'm going to talk about how to include that library from the build we did from the other project. All you do is you right click on your project here and go to properties. And in the properties, you want to change this to all config, all platforms, if it's not already. And you basically want to set up where the headers are to GLFW and where the libraries are to GLFW and you also need to link them. So let's just go through here. I'm going to do it in the C++ Then under general we have additional include libraries. So I'm going to click the drop down here and I'm going to say okay since we know GLFW is in the same folder re source slash repos uh, we can go back a directory from our build then back a directory from our uh, project and then we go into glfw which is i think all lowercase and then from here we should go into includes i believe and that should do it so we'll hit ok and apply and if i got that right let me just see if I got it right. Let's go into GLW. It's include, not includes. Okay. So we got to change that. So I'm going to go to edit, change it to just include. Of course, it has to match exactly or it won't find it. And there we go. So now we've got that. I'm just going to hit OK here. Of course, there's more we got to do. But now it should be able to find this. So we should be able to do include. So you'll start typing and yeah, we see it there. Visual Studio finds it because it's in its include path. So there we got the GLFW stuff. Exit failure, of course, comes from standard the C standard. So we'll, we'll include that. Of course, we could just include like we could just put negative one or something there, but we'll, we'll stick with their example. And they've got some functions here for their callbacks that were probably declared in the other file. So what they've got here is uh, they do the whole window creation. They set some callbacks. I'm going to go ahead and comment out all these callbacks 
and the init. I'm just everything here, everything but the window. And there's the for loop. And we will comment out the stuff that's not working. But as you can see, the swap buffers and the pull events, that's fine. It's not going to do anything right now, but it'll at least go through this loop and it'll wait if the window closes and it breaks. Usually people do while window. They usually put this as the while clause with a knot in front of it, but this works too. This is essentially the same. So and at the end, they, they terminate, which destroys the window for GLFW. So now if we run this, we should get the GLFW popping up, right? Right? Well, we haven't linked the library yet. We've, we've got to the header, and so it can see this code. But when we go to build it, it's not going to have the object files that it needs, and we're going to get this linker error. So that's the other part of this is the linker. So we go back into the properties, just right click on the include libraries, go to properties. And this time we're going to go down a little further to where it says linker. And under linker, we can expand it out. There's general. It's nothing really to change here for us. But input is where we're going to look at. We're going to look at input pretty carefully here. Actually, I think we got to go up to, hold on, there's one more thing. I think it's under this VCC directories. Yeah, there's include libraries or uh, library directories. Yeah, that one's under this VCC. So under the input here, we're going to put the lib under the dependencies, but we also got to put the path to it in this VCC directories. So which we do first doesn't matter. I know that uh, the OpenGL lib, well, let's just take a look at it. So we'll go back to this folder structure where we built and where did the libs go? Now this is tricky sometimes because it goes in a different place depending on people, how people set up their CMake. I'm pretty sure on this it goes into source and then there should be some libs. There's a debug and a release. So let's look at, yeah, debug has one since I built the debug one. Release has one since I built the release. And then there's also an x64 here, which has a debug and release, but these are not what you think. They are just like logs. So they're not the right one. Now what's kind of tricky about this is it doesn't differentiate the 32 and 64. I guess we, oh, we only built this, uh, 64 ones, didn't we? But if we open this project and we build the 32 ones, they're supposed to go to a different directory. I don't think GLFW CMake is set up like that, which kind of throws me off a little bit because usually it'll go into a really, uh, like an X64 or an X86 and then a release and debug sort of like this, except in a build folder. Yeah. But in this case, the build folder is the source goes into source and it just has a debug and release, but they don't say what they are. However, we'll get an error if they're wrong anyway, but we do got to get the debug and release correct. So since this is all configs, all platforms, we can use some macros for that pathing later, but let's go ahead and add the glfw.lib because we saw that's what it was. glfw.lib. I mean, let me look again. glfw3.lib. And this one is also gfw3.lib. So we just got to get that exact lib name and hit OK, hit apply. And now we can go build again. We'll get the same error, except it might be a little different. It might say it can't find it. Yeah, there it is. Cannot open file. And it's because it needs the path to this. It doesn't magically know to scan your whole computer for the live or something. You got It would take forever every build if it did that. So we're going to uh, go back into properties here and go to the VCC directories look at the library directories see the uh, includes we've already got down here it's kind of redundant um, but yeah we've already got the include set up right there the libraries however uh, it says different options here that's because we're set to all platforms some of these platforms are different you can see there's reference path for 64 reference paths for 86 so when you go to all platforms it just says hey there's different options but we can still edit it let me make sure I'm, oh, here we go. Library. I was, I was talking about reference there, but it's the same with the libraries. All right. So we'll go to edit these libraries. And this time we're going to add the path once again to GLFW. So we know we go back a directory. 
uh, from our build folder when we go back a directory from our project and then we can go into glfw3 and then we saw that it was in source and now this next part it could be another deep and either debug or release so what we do here is we put a macro for and the macro is just a dollar sign and then in parentheses configuration i hope i'm saying that i hope i'm doing this right so this will path next to either whatever our configuration is which is debug or release. So this is either the word debug or release, or if we had a min size release, it could also go to that. But for right now, we're only working with debug and release. And that's what this configuration turns into. So we're gonna hit okay, we're gonna hit apply. Uh, I don't think we need the last slash there. I think that's actually gonna bug it out because I'm pretty sure the slash is included. All right, so there we go. And that's just where GLFW was. That's that's all it is. So if GLFW ever gets rebuilt, it'll still path to the same place where we're building it. Now, if you built your GLFW somewhere else, like into the into the build, it's going to probably be GLFW build source debug. All right. So or or check it. It could be different. Check for yourself. All right. So now when we build this, it should succeed unless we messed something up. We go it built and there we go we got the window and we got their title because we copy pasted that in there we go so that's how you include libraries from open source stuff that's up on github and has a cmake it is is just like that so you could do this for every every one of them and uh, anytime glfw3 master gets updated you could pull those updates and rebuild and get the newest latest features right away and this is basically how I do libraries these days, is I bring in the source and custom link them. If it's something that's closed source, and then yeah, I might go download the binaries. And when, and in case you don't know, the binary is this lib. So you can get them pre-built for 64, 32, release debug. It's the same thing. It's just somebody already went through and built it, and then they just uploaded the lib for you to link. And of course you need the headers too, so that you can do this whole thing. Okay, well I think that explains it enough. I'm going to do a part two of this where maybe I add in some OpenGL stuff. If you want, if you guys want, um, let me know below if you want to see a part two. If you want me to continue with this, I could talk more about other types of libs. I could talk about dynamic libs. I could add our other libraries, like I could start adding anything else. Uh, any other lives to this or i could show you how to build your own lives and link them in um, just with visual studio because you can do it you can just right click here and go to add a new project and when you pick a project here there are static libraries which is what glfw3 is there there's also dynamic libraries which you can link in so that way you can have a project have a bunch of different things going on some of them are just libraries you don't run them you just build them every once in a while so that your main project, your main actual executable, uh, will use those. And uh, there you go. So there's a lot to it. I think I've covered a pretty good chunk of libraries. I hope that helps someone out there that's trying to understand libraries more and is maybe stuck. It is essentially the same on Linux. I haven't played around with libraries as much on Linux, but it's essentially the same thing. You just gotta you gotta look up the commands to put in your uh, make file or CMake. Actually, I think CMake handles it for you even on Linux. But if you're making your own make file, then you got to look up the commands. Okay, well, peace out, you guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Matt from Code Tech and Tutorials out. Stay safe out there and keep coding.